Hi, and welcome back. This will be part seven of our series on building out a multi-year cash flow statement. Now, I'm going to do a couple of artificial things here because really the point here is not for me to develop a full working sheet, um, which we now have all the steps to do, but rather what I'd like to be able to do is show you now how to get money out in the case of retirement. So let's just leave everything where it's at, sort of in terms of these values. We're going to get rid of our unnecessary rows here, these rows that have no information in them. And we're going to make an assumption here that at some point, uh, Tina and Jeff are going to retire. So what might happen here is we say, all right, they're not going to have income anymore after a given age. Now we actually set a retirement age on our data sheet. So on that basis, we can set this based on that retirement information. So we've got our retirement age at 65. We can say, you know what? They're not going to get in income anymore after that retirement age. And this is actually a pretty easy thing to do. We can use our if formula where we say if that retirement age is greater than Let's say whoever's age we happen to say 65 is appropriate for. So if that's greater than age than Jeff's age, then there, we're going to have no income. And, and in fact, maybe we do this differently where we say if it's less than, then maybe we're going to have that income. And once it is that age, then we're going to cut that income off. So now that's going to have a retirement actually happen. Oh, I obviously messed something up in there. So if that is, oh, sorry, that is how I want it. We're going to do it actually like this. We're going to do if that amount is less than that retirement age. How about that? And we're going to put our absolute reference in there. And now that should fix that. So now what's going to happen here, we copy that all the way across, and we should see the income stop. Oh, what have we done here? Obviously, my formula has an error in it. Sorry, I see now what I should have done here. I started in the first year. I should have started that in the second year. So we should have done that starting here because, of course, that's otherwise going to generate an error because my amounts build after that. So now we're going to build the formula properly. So if Jeff's age is less than the retirement age that we've set, then we're going to continue with income. But if it's greater than that amount, then we're going to stop that income. So now we can copy that all the way across. And now we should have this proper where we actually are, there we go, retiring, no income, starting at age 65. And we can see that we've generated a problem here, that now we're running out that line of credit. Well, it doesn't make any sense to run out the line of credit. We have some RRSP savings available. And this is really the crux of the retirement savings problem is that we now want to draw on those retirement savings. Now, I've created potentially a little bit of a concern for myself here with using the sum formulas here where I did all these sums, C5, C11 like that. Okay, but I am going to put a row in here now for our, we'll call it RIF income. And whether we call it RIF income or something else, it, or RSP income, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it RIF income. And I'm going to say, all right, if we're into our retirement year, so only if our net income is zero, and if we have a negative balance, then we're going to start to draw on the RIF. In, on the RIF. But if we're in the working years, 
we're not going to pull money out of the RIF, we're going to use the line of credit. So I say only if that net income is zero, then we're going to build some RIF income. Now, that being said, what I probably should consider here is also our OAS and CPP amounts, and I'll come back to those in a moment. So right now, we're just going to draw down the RIF. So now, if I have that net income at zero, that's good. I know that I have to pull enough money out of the RIF to pay all of our expenses. And I haven't done the mortgage. I should have done the mortgage like I did the line of credit and the credit card where eventually it would pay off. Not too fussy on that. We can work through each of those items sort of step by step. It is a lot of work. I get that. Okay, so we now look at the total amounts here. And we say, all right, if that income is zero, we're going to need to pull enough money out of the RIF to pay our expenses. So we're going to take all of those amounts and we're going to sum them up. Except we don't want the savings amount in there. We're not going to continue saving and we'll fix that in a second. In fact, let's do that right now. And let's say that if there is no income, so we can do the same thing here where we do an if statement where we do if this equals zero, then we do zero here, and otherwise we do the amount saved. So that's going to save us some trouble. So now we can copy that all the way across, and we should see that when we get to retirement, that we stop saving, which is probably a logical thing to do. And in fact, we will build in our OAS income and so forth right now, So I just want to look down here and make sure that my formulas haven't gotten weird on me here. And they haven't. Okay, that is I haven't changed this to include my OAS and CPP payments. So we build in some OAS, we build in some CPP. Now there are different ways to do this. Where we could potentially build another sheet and do the same kind of thing where we say, if age is greater than 65, then we're going to start that income here. I'm just going to manually input it because we already know how to do that greater than 65 function. So let's assume that we have OAS here and we have some amount we figured out, maybe $1,200 of OAS. And again, that amount will adjust to inflation. And we have CPP, and maybe we have $900 of CPP, and that amount will also adjust to inflation. Oh, and I should do those times 12, sorry. We don't want to use monthly figures. We certainly want to use annual figures. Excel doesn't like that because I didn't do a formula there. And now we've got our inflation all the way across applied to our government benefits. So now I can figure out my RIF amount. Now it's time to do this properly. And I say, all right, I know I'm going to need to take some money out of the RIF. So how much do we need to take out of the RIF? Well, I'm only going to do this first off if my income equals zero. So only if that income is zero. And then, what do I have to take out here? Well, I know I'm going to have some income and I'm going to have some expenses. So the amount that I have to take out is going to be the total amount of my expenses minus the total amount of my income. And that tells me how much is left. Now the other thing that's going to have to happen here is I'm going to have to have some 
tax on my RIF withdrawals. So I also know that I have to gross that amount up for taxes. Now I haven't built a uh, indication here of what my tax rate is, so I'm just going to make a reference to that cell. And that's going to tell me what I'm taking out of my RIF. So now I'm ready to go. I have this formula built. I'm going to go and I'm going to plug in a tax rate here. I'm going to call this our tax on RIF withdrawals. And I'm going to set that at maybe 30%. Doesn't really matter. I can move it around later on. And I'm going to pop back here. And I say, all right, now we're going to start to clean out the RIF. So at the point where we get to age 65, when we have this income shortfall, the RIF is going to make that up for me. And I have adjusted it for inflation, or sorry, for taxation as well. Now, my line of credit, I'm still drawing on that. I don't want to be drawing on that if I have enough money coming from my RIF and other sources. So I have to go back and fix my line of credit formula now so that I'm not doing both of these things. And we'll do that in the next video.